And so it comes to this. After looking at my favorites, it is now time to get negative and talk about my top five worst Disney live action reboots. Some of the movies you like will get trashed. Some of the movies you hate will get praised. Just post your top five in the comments and I'll check them out. And then we can discuss it like civilized YouTube commenters, which is a thing that definitely exists. Some clarifications, I will not include The Lion King in this list seeing as it's all CG and therefore not live action, although I will talk about it right at the end. I will however not leave out partially animated live action films. Today I am mostly just focusing on remakes, prequels and sequels to classic animated features. So here we go and don't forget to stick around until the very end of the video because I will be talking about the reboots that did not make any of the lists. Get over there! Get over there! Number 5 Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. I understand that Maleficent did really well at the box office, but what is this? Listen, I never thought I would ask this question, but Disney, are you high? Here we have a sequel to Maleficent in which the classic villain meets Prince Charming's family, the king and queen, when the prince proposes to Sleeping Beauty. Unfortunately, the queen is evil Michelle Pfeiffer and she manufactures a hit on Maleficent who almost dies then goes to Maleficent land where everyone is a Maleficent and then she comes back and an all out war breaks out between the land of mushroom goblins, the Maleficents and the evil queen. Did you get all that? I don't know what they were thinking with this movie. This movie is so crazy. I kinda like it. It's like the Super Mario Brothers movie or Howard the Duck or Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It's so bad for me, but it's so good and I can't go without it. It's like a drug. People die in this movie. A lot of people. It's a bloodbath. There's, there's mushrooms dating hedgehogs. There's Warwick Davis playing a, a goblin wizard. There's World War II imagery. I am not kidding. There's a character in this movie who is a Nazi, flat out. One of the three fairies gets murdered in what I can only describe as a magical gas chamber. Specifically, a deadly gas spewing church organ. I, I don't even know what to say about that. My, my jaw was on the floor. This movie is batshit insane. It's not good, but you gotta watch it. <laughs> That's my paradoxical take on this, okay? Jesus, Disney, what the hell? <laughs> Number four, The Jungle Book. People love this movie. People love it. They can't get enough of it. The amount of praise I've seen this movie receive is unreal from every direction. It's getting a sequel. And some people I've even seen say it's even better than the original. And to those people specifically, I gotta ask, are you freaking kidding me? The original Jungle Book is flat out a masterpiece. It's one of the best Disney films of all time. The songs and characters are timeless. The second that this haunting theme starts playing, I am transported back in time to my childhood and then into this animated jungle where I lose myself instantly. Because of how much I love that movie, you might think that I went into this new one with like a bad attitude, but no. I was genuinely curious to see if Disney could actually create another definitive version of this movie just in live action. And after watching it, I wasn't even trashing it. I was just kind of like, well, that happened, you know? This is not the worst film ever. It's an altogether nice looking movie. This stuff I like about it, Idris Elba does a good job with the voice acting, as does Bill Murray, who is perfectly cast as Baloo. The CG on the animals is well done. I like that one scene with the elephants. To be honest, I was this close to not including this movie in the list at all, because it is mostly CG. The animals are CG, most of the backgrounds are CG, I, I'm pretty sure 99% of the jungle is CG. The kid, however, is not CG, it's a live action character, there's other live action characters in it. So I thought close enough, we'll include it in. Besides, I think it's worth talking about. To me though, there is just no comparison between the old film and this one. This movie, as hard as it tries, just comes off as soulless. The young actor plays Mowgli, feels lost saying all his lines in front of a green screen the whole time. How do you know that? The animals all have those dead eyes that real animals have, so they're about as charming as statues. Most of the time, they just come off as creepy. When Christopher Walken started singing as King Louis, which definitely happened, and by the way, it wasn't a dream, I'm pretty sure, and it was legit, like, miserable. I was like, what is happening? 
Even Bill Murray's Bare Necessities, while it sounds nice enough, is just so slow and lifeless. The realistic animal look would have worked fine if Disney had scrapped the songs altogether, which I believe it should have, because the musical style does not work here. Like, at all, it feels really out of place. And why is Mowgli Tony Stark? I mean, I know Jon Favreau directed this, alright, so he's got Iron Man on the brain, but what's with that? He's just like building stuff out of nothing, he's like this genius, what, where'd that come from all of a sudden? I don't know, for me this movie lacked charm, it lacked color, it lacked humor, it lacked everything that made the original Jungle Book such a classic. Some of the characters like Ka now feel completely pointless and the vultures aren't even really there. If you're gonna do the musical thing, you gotta have the vultures, dude. Fine, scrap the elephants, no one likes the elephants. Hot take, hot take everybody. Only really cool people know that the vultures are actually the best part of that original movie. Come on. Suffice it to say, I didn't like it and I just don't get the love that this movie got. I can only assume that most people who loved it just haven't seen the original ever or maybe in a very long time. I could be wrong though. Let me know if I'm missing something. Number 3. Maleficent. That's right. Mistress of Evil is lower on the list than the original. This is a weird list. I'll explain. While the sequel is on the list because it's just complete, hilarious, mind-melting, glorious nonsense, this first movie is on the list for totally different reasons. The problem with these new reboots, especially the prequels, is they can't help themselves but change the original stories. Even the good ones do it, like Cruella. I talk more about that in my Cruella review by the way, so you should check that out. But I would argue that Maleficent is much clumsier with it because it completely defies the point of Sleeping Beauty in order to tell its own story that frankly is nowhere as good. If you're gonna throw a classic story under the bus, you better have something better to offer because this whole thing about Maleficent actually being this nice cool goth auntie and in fact it's everyone else who is bad, it's not cutting it. Maleficent is an awesome pretty scary villain. She's no joke. The cool thing about Maleficent is that if she's pissed off, she will ruin you. Not even you, your kids. Even if all you did to her is just snub her from a cool party. That's what makes her so terrifying. Her punishment is so over the top and she makes you wait. You have no idea when the hammer will drop. This is why Sleeping Beauty is exiled by her parents because they're like, you gotta go somewhere safe. We don't know what's gonna happen, but it's gonna be bad. It's scary. Maleficent is scary. And you get none of that here, which for me makes this movie not just a misfire, but bad. Oh, sure, it looks nice and the casting of Angelina Jolie is pretty good, but who cares when this Maleficent movie is not about Maleficent. It's about some other Maleficent who lives in a parallel dimension, who rules over forest gnomes and is a good person somehow. Give me a break. At least the sequel had the presence of mind to not have any presence of mind. Although, I gotta hand it to the sequel. It at least got the evil mother-in-law thing correctly from the old stories. This could have been awesome. Maleficent being her old terrifying evil self but what we got instead was a joke. Number two, Alice through the looking glass. Oh boy, where do I start with this one? So there's Tim Burton movies and there's pseudo Tim Burton movies. Movies that Tim Burton was happy to make money from, but not direct himself. Get involved with, just, just not get too involved. And with through the looking glass, Disney was happy to just collect more money from anything that kinda, sorta, maybe looked Tim Burton-y. Unfortunately, this backfired like crazy when the movie just about made $300 million overall on the $170 million budget. And while this may sound like a lot of money, considering Alice in Wonderland made over a billion dollars, including over $300 million domestically, Through the Looking Glass can comfortably be called a flop. But what went wrong? Did anything go wrong? Just because a movie is a flop at the box office doesn't mean it, it's bad. This movie's kinda bad though. I think the mixed reviews that the first film received, despite the massive audience it had, definitely played a big part in it, as did the fact that Looking Glass came out six years later. Way too late. No one gave a shit. No one cared. Once again, Mia Wasikowska was rather bland as Alice, the time travel plot which is partly about the Mad Hatter's family which we're meant to care about for some reason, that was convoluted and once again not in a good Lewis Carroll kind of way. And the lack of Tim Burton behind the wheel coupled with a cast that very clearly did not give a crap, that did not help. I genuinely don't know what Helena Bottom Carter and Johnny Depp are doing in this movie. I, 
I don't know. Say what you will about the first film, they were great in it. They played their wacky parts perfectly, but here, it's almost like they forgot how they played the characters the first time around, and they just didn't give a shit enough to re-watch the original movie. It's a mess. I just didn't care about the story in this movie at all. And it has a weird vibe to it, like it's trying way too hard. But I'll say a couple of nice things about it. Sasha Baron Cohen as Father Time is actually pretty good. He's the only one that seems to genuinely have a good time here. Along with Andrew Scott who plays some evil doctor. Because maybe it's their first go around so they're excited about it, I don't know. The movie has some cool visuals here and there. Danny Elfman is still on board as composer. It could have been worse, but man, it's a tough one to sit through. Very disappointing. And finally number one, Aladdin. Hear me out. I understand that this is a pretty popular movie. That's another one that made a billion dollars at the box office, okay? And a lot of people do really like it. And it's an entertaining movie. And you know, if you've never seen Aladdin before, you'll probably have a good time with it. But I just, this, this was a painful one for me. Aladdin is probably my favorite Disney film ever. I've seen it many times as a kid and as a grown-up. Everything about it is just awesome, from the songs to the cast. It's pure Disney magic all the way. It's funny as hell, it's colorful, it's fun. It's my childhood, you know? I love it to this day. The last time I saw it was the last time I was in Disneyland. I watched it in open-air screening, and guess what? It was still amazing. Right off the bat, this Aladdin doesn't cut it, and it keeps not cutting it over and over and over for just over two hours. Remember that the original film is a smooth and perfect 90 minutes. If you're gonna ruin my childhood, at least do it quick, like a band-aid. In the vein of Beauty and the Beast, this movie aimed to present us with a similar kind of shot for shot remake kind of deal, with all the songs included and everything. But where Beauty and the Beast succeeded with that endeavor, I would argue Aladdin failed miserably. I'll give the movie that, it tries. It tries very hard. It's almost like the wrong person is directing this movie, you know? It's like when Tim Burton directed like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or Sweeney Todd. Pretty good movies, I enjoy them. But you can tell that this is, these are not made by someone who likes musicals, you know? It's just kind of slightly slower than it should be. There's something off about it. Same thing here. Actually, you know what? Let me check. Who directed this movie? Guy Ritchie? Guy Ritchie? The Snatch Guy? The musical numbers are so freaking slow and soulless, it makes it all feel so depressing. I just want to turn that movie off and just put on the original every time someone starts to sing in this movie. And look, credit where credit is due, I think Will Smith is actually really fun as the genie. When he's just the genie in the movie talking to Aladdin, he's great. He's funny, he brings a good amount of energy to the table, but his singing is horrible. Song as ten regular men, definitely. It's horrible. You know it's horrible. Even you guys who like this movie, you know his singing is horrible in this. Robin Williams was not a singer, but he nailed that role. And he kicked ass in every single song. The Friend Like Me sequence blew me away the first time I saw it. Prince Ali as well. But here it's like Will Smith is trying. He's really trying, but it just frankly doesn't work. And it's a shame because he does really well otherwise. Plus, between you and me, let's be honest, the CG looks really weird on him. Also, this Aladdin and this Jasmine are just not very likable. They're so bland and boring, and the songs that Jasmine is given are awful. They literally all sound like Skyfall, and they stop the movie dead in its tracks. I get that they wanted to give Jasmine more to do here, and I'm all for that, but if you're gonna add to the masterpiece that is the original Aladdin, you better make it freaking good. It's the Aladdin Broadway musical problem all over again, with the genie, the extra songs, and the inflated storyline just not quite working. For an example of this being done actually well, check out the Little Mermaid Broadway musical. They add a whole bunch of stuff in there, including new songs sung by characters that didn't get to sing the first time around, and the cast is obviously completely different, but it all works really well. It's fantastic, actually. I gotta be honest, this Jafar sucks as well. He's nowhere near as entertaining or slimy as he is in the animated version, and in my book, if you screw up Jafar in an Aladdin movie, you screw up the entire movie. Even the Sultan isn't funny, and Yago is just a freaking parrot who becomes a kaiju at the end for some reason. Although, to be honest, by that point, my brain had already melted into itself, into like a solid square block, there was nothing going through there, 
and it was kind of just like watching a fever dream on screen. Like I said, this is an entertaining enough movie. Will Smith is enjoyable. The songs are good songs. I just think this is such a massive downgrade from the original film. Every single step of the way from the cast to the musical numbers, the costumes, the story, the songs. Why on earth would you ever watch this instead of the superior animated classic? Watch the Aladdin animated sequels. They're actually pretty decent. Or the TV series. At least play the Aladdin Sega Genesis game. It's good stuff. So because the new Aladdin fails to match the 90s film on any level, and in fact fails pretty hard in my opinion overall, it is my number one worst Disney reboot. It's not the worst film in the world, and I get why people like it, it's just not for me. I'm so ticked off that I'm molting! So that was my top 5 worst Disney live action reboots. Oh yeah, what about all the other films that didn't get included in either list? I mean, we gotta talk about them a little bit. Starting with Cinderella. Look, I was never a massive fan of the original Cinderella, okay? However, there was definitely a lot to enjoy in that movie. The animation was stunning, the songs were catchy, the villains were really despicable, and that includes the cat. And of course, all the magic stuff in the movie was pretty cool. I'll be super honest here, this new Cinderella movie was not... It, it wasn't bad. It just doesn't really add anything all that interesting, and at the same time, it never quite reaches the charm of the original film. But it's not offensively bad or anything. Kate Blanchett is good in it, Helena Bonham Carter is not. It's really a mixed bag. I'm pretty indifferent about that one. Pete's Dragon. This one didn't make it in the list because obviously the original was mostly live action as well. So it's not a live action remake of an animated film. But I wish I could have included it in the worst list because this is probably one of Disney's most overrated reboots. People talk about this movie like it's the most heartbreaking, beautiful film ever. And it's so much better than the old movie. But this was such a boring, bland movie to me. I can't believe the reviews were so kind to it. It's seriously like a Hallmark movie with a budget. The original had kick-ass songs, hilarious characters, and Elliot, one of the most adorable movie dragons of all time. Look at that face! It's so freaking cute, and the movie was sad as well. What is this? No, this is, this is not Elliot. It's a dragon, it's a green dragon, but Elliot? Nah. Mary Poppins Returns. I don't know about this movie. It's not like I'm the biggest Mary Poppins fan ever. I'm much more of a bedknobs and broomsticks man myself. But I like the original Mary Poppins and I totally get why it was such a big hit. Despite Dick Van Dyke's horrible accent and the boring parts of the movie. The sequel is... Fan fiction. I don't know how else to put it. It's not bad. Meryl Streep is good in it. The animated parts are cool. Some of the songs are sort of catchy. The Angela Lansbury and Dick Van Dyke cameos are cute. I just didn't see the point of it. It tries very hard to be charming, but it tries just a little bit too hard to be convincing. And nothing about it is all that impressive, really, apart from the animation. Emily Blunt did her best, okay? But she is no Julie Andrews. I'm sorry. Lady and the Tramp. I'm not too attached to the original, but I must admit the film did a good job to try and recapture the original film's charm, and it did alright with it. Again, real looking animals don't quite cut it compared to the animated ones who are much cuter and more expressive. This wasn't bad though, and it wasn't that good either. It was a fine kids movie, and it's altogether pretty harmless. The jazzy soundtrack was kinda nice, and the cast is likeable. Christopher Robin. Like Alice in Wonderland, this is kind of like a sequel to a movie you've never seen. Somewhere out there, there's a live action Winnie the Pooh movie that's very good. It's so good it got a sequel, and this is it. This one definitely tries hard to pull the heartstrings, and it sort of does that successfully towards the end. But this was just Paddington again. The animated characters sound and look pretty good, but the slapstick and paper thin storyline lacks richness and this makes the movie feel a lot lighter than it should do. I wanted this to be hilarious or a complete tearjerker and it never really got there either way. Decent enough film it didn't blow me away. The Lion King. I didn't like that one. The, <laughs> the CG was good. That's about it. I think the songs mostly survive quite well, except Be Prepared, my favorite Lion King song, which is completely butchered. The tone of this movie is kind of weird, and it's all just so soulless. It's the Jungle Book problem turned up to 11, with the dead-eyed, real-looking animals trying to give us a Broadway musical experience somehow, without any facial expressions whatsoever. It's kind of a miserable movie to sit through. Like Aladdin, it's not that bad technically, and if you've never seen Lion King, you'll have an okay time with it, but why in the world would you put yourself through this movie when you could just be watching the original Lion King? It's really good. Watch that. 
Oh, and uh, Frank and Winnie is really awesome. Thank you all for watching this video. It's been a very Disney week this week. Um, so yeah, so now it's time to turn to spookier things as Halloween gets closer and closer. So expect some, some more Halloween themed videos from next week onwards. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check out my Patreon where you can request stuff for me to review. Anyway, here's hoping that Disney either stops this or continues the madness forever. Or at least until I can put together a new list, okay? I need, I need the content. I need this. I need a Jafar prequel, Tim Burton's Bambi, uh, Aladdin 2, 3, 4. Just, just go ahead, all right? I'll, I'll warm up the top five machine. I'm ready. My body's ready. My brain, what's left of it is ready. Maleficent in space. I'm in. Anyway, until then, good luck out there. We will need it. We will need it. Prince Ali, yes, it is he, Ali Ababwa.